you have a new project on your mind and you're very excited. And so it's very tempting to immediately start coding, immediately start building. But before you do that, make sure you have a good high level understanding of what you're trying to build. That way you can save a lot of time and energy and money, especially if you're building in the cloud. You can make a mistake in the cloud and it can cost you a lot of money. A lot of these services do not have caps on spending. And with the AI co-pilots that we have these days, a lot of these lower level details are kind of taken care of. I just have to tap through my code. So I'm not really worried about those lower level details and algorithms. So it's more about higher level thinking these days. So when you want to build a project, you may just want to think, what am I building? And you can already sense it can be a little bit tedious to draw out a diagram like that, right? And find all the little lines and little icons and make it look decent. I want to show you a tool actually that really speeds up that whole process. It's this AI diagram tool here by Eraser. Okay, so this is an app that I I've been using for some time. If you're watching my videos, pretty much whenever I need to explain higher level concepts, I'm using this eraser.io app. They are of course today's sponsor. They're launching their AI feature. So this is like an AI co-pilot for system or technical design. So basically we're trying to create a diagram and there are different types of diagrams, but these are some common ones. So here, for example, an entity relationship. Now that's maybe for example, if you're trying to create a schema for your database. And so for example, we wanna build an app for uh, pet daycares, maybe a SaaS. So a user would actually be managing a pet daycare business and they have customers that drop off pet. Each pet has a name, age, some note. Now a daycare may have multiple locations. Some daycares are part of a larger franchise organization, right? So you can see there are multiple entities in this description and I want to see what the erasers AI can do with this. I don't even have to select this actually. It will automatically pick the most suitable type here, but then it's going to generate this. You can see it's picked it here. All right. So then it starts to build out a diagram here. Let's see what it comes up with. All right. So literally after a couple seconds, this is what we get. I would say this is really good, right? So here we see the various entities, right? So we have pet, we have a customer, we have locations here, and there are certain relationships between them, right? One to many relationship. I can double click here. I can modify this in code actually, right? So this is just a visualization of the code that we see here, right? So maybe we want to add subscription plans to users. I can also just write it here, right? Subscription plan, and it will be added here in the diagram. And then below here, you can also define the uh, relationships between them, right? Maybe this should be a many to many type of relationship, you would see that reflected here. A right? very nice way actually to quickly iterate over a, a data model for your idea. And now you want to convert this to a Prisma schema, let's say. I can quickly copy this and let me actually try plopping this into ChatGPT to see if I can create a Prisma schema from this describing ER diagram. All right, and it's generating a Prisma schema for me. Actually looks pretty decent, I think. Uh, but this would be a nice way, I think, to quickly iterate over some ideas for your data model. But let's say I also want to have some kind of flow charts. Actually, I can, I can use command J and open up another AI diagram here. So they actually have some great examples on their website. I took some of them, modified them a little bit. So here we want to have a flow for an appointment scheduling app. So there should be doctors on that app. So we're going to sign up each doctor. We're going to ask the doctor for their practice locations. And if they have more than four locations, we're going to add them to Salesforce. And then we continue. If a doctor, if doctor takes video calls, then we can ask if they're authorized in some state and if that's true they need to have special requirement and if not we can finish the onboarding right so just some kind of flow here it should pick a flow chart just from the description so let's actually see what we get all right so it's starting to generate here let's see you can see it picked a flow chart all right starting to look pretty good all right so that actually looks pretty good so let's take a look so we ask for practice locations if they have more than four locations we add to salesforce yeah that's correct then we continue video call check yes that's correct do they take video call checks yes then we check if they're authorized in wyoming and then some special requirement and then we finish right here yeah this looks really good right? and again i can change anything i want here actually i can also click and drag things around of course it's not a static image or something like that right so we can actually change this as we please all right looks pretty good let's uh, try more like a high level architecture type of diagram they give some good uh, examples here as well but let me actually try this one so i know that a lot of you are actually building these ai chatbots these PDF chatbots seem to be really popular, actually. Uh, let me actually just hit generate and let's go through it here. So you want to allow your users to upload a PDF file and then they should be able to chat with that 
with the content from that PDF file. All right, so we want to create vector embeddings, store them in a vector store. And then whenever there is a query, right, so actually a message from the user, we need to vectorize it and then compare that with the stored vector embeddings. Right, so that's basically what I wrote down here. So here we have a user, user uploads a PDF. Then we have some processing step where we take the actual text from the PDF. We actually want to store the plain text as well, but we want to create vector embeddings out of the text, store the vector embeddings themselves. Okay, that's the processing essentially. And then of course the user will want to chat with that. So here we may have some UI, maybe a chatbot, and they will send a message. We will factorize that message, compare that vector with the vector Vectors from the database, we will find the closest text from the text storage, right? And then we just hit some chat API to generate a nice response for the user. And then we actually respond to the user, right? So really nice high level architecture, very easily generated. I can just write my thoughts down and just quickly iterate it over a possible architecture before even making mistakes in my cloud setup. I can already think through it, right? And if I want to change this, I can actually just start writing here again, store embeddings in Pinecone, let's say, because this is more like a general vector database. All right, so then here we get the the updated diagram right so that's how you would iterate over your diagrams and then once you're kind of satisfied you have a good high level understanding that's when you can get into the code and you'll see that coding is not necessarily the step that takes up most of your time once you know what you want essentially most of the coding tasks are pretty quick to implement it's usually this higher level thinking that takes up a lot of time and energy actually right so these are some quick examples here now i have to say eraser has some really high quality examples here in the app as well so they have some diagram as code they have cloud architecture here, right? So all of these templates essentially that you can get started with, right? So they have a complete catalog here. So you can find something that's pretty close to your own use case. Now at calendar booking app, e-commerce website data model. Let's actually see we can get a nice data model again, right? So I would say check out Razer, check out their AI feature. It's just commands in J and it will pop up this AI diagram here. I've enjoyed using Razer so far. Great design as well. Really like it. So I would say check it out. I want to thank Razer for sponsoring this video and I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you the next one.